Okay, so first thing we need to do is get rid of these uh, bolts holding the cover plate to the exit valve. Now the hole is a, it's called what's called a Torx hole, it's like a star shape. Uh, it's a Torx uh, T30 is the size. Now this bike is fairly new, it's only a 2011 model. So these bolts should come undone fairly quickly. I pre-loosened the bolts off camera so it took a little more effort than you currently see. Keep that plate aside. Next, we have to remove this tang, and I'll show you close up photos throughout the video. Around the spring holder, around the tang that holds it down. Uh, and then it'll pop back up to about. Uh, about it's here right now it'll pop back up to this position you can see right at the tip of the red arrow this is the tab I'm talking about and then that uh, slightly brighter uh, tang for the spring is just underneath it we need to pop it around so that it flicks up to around the one or two o'clock position if you can see this wire has no tension because this valve is actually stuck so I'll turn the bike on and you'll watch it try and open the valve as it starts and it can't actually pull from the top wire so you can see nothing's actually moving and you can hear the servo motor trying. Alright, so at this point I'm starting to realize that my valve isn't actually stuck at all. My bottom wire has actually frayed. So as you can see by the arrow, it's supposed to move back and forth as the servo motor switches, but nothing's actually moving. Uh, at this point, I'll just continue to lube my valve anyway. So next we're gonna get 13 millimeter uh, wrench and we're going to undo this uh, center bolt here. Now there is a tabbed washer that's bent up to stop it from moving. That's soft enough that it will unbend itself as we turn this. Okay so after you get that nut off everything pretty much just falls right off. So here's an image of everything in order as it came off. Okay, so we're putting the copper grease on first, just uh, something like that. Uh, this particular brand here, is, I believe it's an Australian brand, uh, Penrite, uh, rated to 1000 degrees, so it should be good for exhaust. So just get a little, little bit on the end of your finger there, and we're going to put it around the actual rotating bit of the valve. we're going to push it so it goes into the corner where the actual bolt and the housing rotate. Most of you are watching this video because your valve is actually stuck whereas mine isn't. So an extra step to take in between is you would get some sort of WD-40 or something similar that's going to loosen or free up the any rust or any corrosion that's actually locked or frozen your valve. Uh, let that set for a while, get some spanners and just rotate it back and forth until it moves completely freely and then lube. And just wipe off the excess around the corners. Now you can put some on the edge of the cable as well. Uh, to stop them binding. In this case I won't because they're not stuck at all. Put the bell housing back on. Putting the spring back on in this orientation. Ok, 
Okay, so after getting this on, the spring, this tang has to go underneath this ridge. And then this hook has to clip the other tang. And then you have to pull it so that this comes above that ridge where that the spring is underneath. So once that is done, we can put the washer back and the nut back. Remembering this arrow should be pointing towards the bottom wire. Normally this would be around like that. However, today I'm not replacing it until I can get a new part. So we put this back on. Then you want to get a hammer and a flat head screwdriver to bend that washer back in place. Put the protective cover back on. And the last step is just to tighten down the nuts holding on the cover. Um, this is a non-essential part of the bike, so it doesn't really have to be torqued to an appropriate setting, but something in 15, 20 uh, Newton meters should be fine.